In a synchrotron, like Soleil, several dozen specific laboratories, the beamlines, use extremely bright light to probe and study samples of all kinds of materials. But how is this radiation produced? To find out, we invite you on a 3D journey through the Soleil accelerators. Everything depends on electrons, these particles that are part of our everyday lives when we use electricity. Well, a synchrotron runs on these same electrons. Here we are in the first part of the machine, the LINAC or Linear Accelerator, which measures 16 meters. The journey starts in an electron gun similar to those in old television sets with cathode tubes. When we switch on, a small piece of alloy, or cathode, is heated. Then, by applying an electrical potential of 90,000 volts, electrons are pulled out of the metal. Shot from the gun, the electrons cross into a buncher. In each of its copper cavities, an electric field accelerator will chop the electron bunches into even smaller bunches and give them energy. The electrons circulate round the machine in bunches 2 to 3 centimeters long. At this point, they are already traveling at more or less the speed of light. Then, a further acceleration before reaching a quadrupole. This electromagnet with four poles keeps the electrons on the correct axis in the same way as a magnifying glass focuses light rays onto its focal point. The machine contains at least 50 quadrupoles. At the end of the LINAC, the electrons are injected into the booster, the second synchrotron accelerator, a ring with a circumference of 156 meters. It continues to control the size and energy of the electron bunches. The electrons can travel round bends due to the magnetic force exerted on them. This time, it is bending magnets that intervene, colored red, on the machine. The electrons make a complete circuit round the booster with the help of these 36 bending magnets. During each circuit, they cross an accelerator cavity that regroups and increases their energy a little. In less than two-tenths of a second, they make 300,000 circuits and at that point reach the operating energy chosen by Soleil, 2.75 billion electron volts. Now the electron bunches are ready for the last stage of their journey. The electron bunches are injected into the storage ring, where they will circulate for several hours in the form of a beam thinner than a strand of hair. This storage ring, with a circumference of 354 meters, is a series of alternating bends and straight sections. At each bend, the electrons lose some energy in the form of radiation. This radiation goes straight along one of the beam lines constructed just behind the wall of the tunnel housing the storage ring. This synchrotron radiation is therefore pulsed, but because there are millions of light emissions per second, it can be considered as continuous for many applications. To ensure the reliability of the machine, a great number of controls are carried out continuously to check the correct alignment of the electron beam. When even infinitely small deviations, less than a micrometer, are detected, the information is sent in real time to the central computer. This then sends immediate commands to the correcting dipoles to rectify the beam position. In the straight sections of the ring, machines called undulators make the electrons zigzag. The electron bunches pass between two rows of magnets in juxtaposition which forces them to follow an undulating pathway. They then emit light, which accumulates the entire length of the setup, thereby becoming considerably brighter. The exceptional qualities of synchrotron light, brilliance, pulsatility, polarization, 
adjustable wavelength are the result of the electrons being guided and accelerated by all these machines along their epic journey. These machines are so reliable that they have made Soleil the standard today for synchrotrons throughout the world and set the scene for top-class research possibilities.